Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. Welcome to another plug-in knowledge session. This week we're having a look at Isotope Neutron Compressor. So in previous videos, we have done an overview of Neutron and the main features of it. We've had a look at the equalizer in greater detail, and now we're having a look at the compressor in greater detail. If you haven't watched the previous videos, the reason I'm breaking it up into sections is because this plugin is so detailed and so advanced that to cover it all in these short sessions is basically impossible. So I'm breaking it up into the individual modules to make it a lot easier and make these videos as short and palatable as possible. So with Neutron, we actually have two slots for compressors but both of them are basically the same. We can obviously have different settings on each one, but they are the same. Now you might be wondering what's the reason for the fact that they've put two compressors in there. It is because it's quite a common technique when you're processing uh, a track, especially something, say vocals, where you may actually want to apply two compressors. It's very common to do that. You might have one style of compressor first hitting taking the peaks off something, and then a second compressor that's squashing it a bit more, having some more greater control with different levels. So as with all the other plugins, we have some presets specific to the compressor. We also have this control here where we can blend in a certain amount of the compressor only instead of all of it. We can turn it on and off. Quite simple, we can move it in the chain to wherever we would like it to be. And if we sort of start from the top here, we have this button here, Vintage Mode. Now, at the moment it's off. So basically we're using a, a digital style compressor with all the advanced features of digital. And we can switch on a Vintage Mode here where we start to get the, the vintage style of a compressor where it adds a little bit of color. It's not as clean, it's not as accurate and detailed as the digital mode. We have an output gain control so we can manually adjust the gain so that we can level match our plug-in to the normal system there. We have some buttons here for our level detection. So this is where the compressor is working out when to compress and we've got uh, RMS, which basically takes an average of the signal and does this detection from that. We have peak, which uses the actual looking at peaks. So, so as opposed to RMS, where it's sort of averaging those peaks and those lows out and, and trying to determine how loud the signal is, the peak is actually looking at the peaks can be quite useful if you want to sort of really knock off those peaks at the top and not really concentrate on the average of it. And true mode is similar to RMS, and this is going by the manual. It states that it's the same as RMS, except it has some advantages in that it, it, it tries to produce even levels across all the frequencies. So instead of just across the entire song, it tries to level out the frequencies as well. We have a learn control here. So if we were to turn on multiple bands, we can activate learn. And as we play the song, it will actually try to determine the best place for the crossover points. We have our graph here obviously showing what we are doing and then we have our various compressors and we have the ability to have three bands of compressors and here they are each one of them is identical we can obviously have different settings in each one but other than that each one is identical but each one will operate in a band so this is a multi-band compressor obviously if I turn them all off and have one band, then it's not a multi-band compressor anymore. It is a standard compressor. So I'm going to assume that you understand how a compressor works at this stage, because otherwise this is going to be a very long video. So we've got our threshold setting, which as normal determines 
at what level the audio needs to be for the compressor to kick in. We have our button here, which I've indicated here, turns the band on or off. We have a bypass and we have a solo. Now, you might wonder why we have a bypass and an on-off button, what's the difference? Here would be the main difference. So if I was to turn this band off, all of this would change, where the crossovers are, what each one does. But if I wanted to leave this one in here, I could bypass it. It doesn't compress, but it leaves these other two bands locked in those positions. Whereas, as you saw, if I take that away, suddenly the frequencies that the band affects changes. So that's the beauty of the bypass. Plus, it's good for obviously testing and again, soloing. So if we're setting up this compressor, we can solo it so we only hear this frequency range of our signal. We have our ratio, that's quite standard. We have a knee, so that determines the roll off of the frequency. We have gain, so again, we can we can gain balance our plugin so that we are hearing a true representation of what the compressor is doing. We have our attack speed, our release speed, and we've got a mix control. So again, we can do sort of like parallel compression by mixing in only a small portion of the compressor and leaving the rest as the dry signal. We have side chain capability, so we can turn the side chain on and set different things there to external bands, internal bands, all of that good stuff for side chaining. And I said, all of these settings are on each one of these. We have an auto gain control here, so if we turn that off, then all of our gains will be manually controlled turn it on then it attempts to automatically gain and adjust as well so that as more compression is applied it will increase the volume or vice versa we also have an automatic release timer so we can have that turned on or off and we have a button over here that actually sets a detection circuit filter as a state so if we enable that we can actually filter out frequencies we do not want the compressor deter detector circuit to hear so it doesn't actually filter those audio that audio out of your signal it just stops the compressor from actually hearing it to make its decisions on whether it compresses or not so we can adjust it by as i'm showing dragging there we can even boost it up if we wanted to but we can also turn it off entirely so it's not there all right, so let's play some audio and just have a bit of a play with that and then we will switch over to vintage mode and have a look at that. So we're going to start off in single band here and just get some compression going. see from our graph here where it's pulling down as well it's a very handy graph I always always like the isotope graphs because they clearly show you what the compressor is doing based on the audio signal and you can also see it here pulling down as well This graph is very handy for setting a release timer there to make sure that the compressor has released before the next kick hit happens. As you can see, if I go too long, 
it hasn't released. It hasn't released on a lot of the beats there, and it's staying up there. We could do some really savage compression. Turn our mix down, wind a bit in. And then we could bring in some other bands, so we can obviously do some compression differently in each band. So we could wind that back down. And we could solo each band at a time. So let's say we bring all three in, and let's just say we work on the low end here. But before I do that, let's actually do the learn function and see where it determines to put the crossovers. Okay, so when the light goes out on the button, it's done. So it's determined 167 and 5.84K is where it likes these crossovers to happen. So now let's solo the first one. So this is our kick, obviously. So you can see from these graphs as I click in them, we can get different amounts of compression happening on each one of these. And as I said before, we can grab these crossovers and move them to where we prefer. If we want to affect different frequency ranges differently. And as I said, you can bypass individual ones and leave them bypassed so they don't get any compression or even just set them to very low figures. Now, one other thing I do want to show is that normally compressors work in a downward way. So they basically take the peaks and they reduce them. So actually what I forgot to do, which I'll do first, is just switch between these two modes. So we've got some compression going.
So you'll generally find peak mode is going to hit a bit harder because the peaks are usually a lot higher than what the average is. But obviously you are going to set this mode to what you want to be first off and then adjust your settings to suit that mode. So switching between the three is not really an accurate thing to do there. And to be honest, it's not really showing too much on this drums because I guess it's a fairly consistent beat and not much is really changing there. So with compressors, they're usually pulling the, the volume of the track down as the peaks go over the threshold. But you can actually go into a negative way here and actually do upwards compression. So upwards compression is basically the reverse. So what that does is it actually leaves the peaks at the same level, but brings the lower signals up. So it boosts the lower signals. And you can tell you're in that mode when you go down and it goes into the into brackets there. So if we have a listen. You can hear the ring of that snare brought up. So that's upward compression, which can be useful sometimes, but it's not used that often. You need some specific things to use that for. So I just wanted to quickly show you that anyway. Um, so let's switch over to vintage mode and you'll see here vintage mode. Not much looks different other than the meters here. So again, we've got our bands, multi-band. We can run it in single band as I am. See our little meter moving here. Just switch between the two, see if you can notice a difference. And again, like I said, we can run in multiband. It's definitely a different sound to the two, so which one you prefer is up to you. But what you can do is, because you've got two compressors, you can always do a digital compressor on one and a vintage compressor on the other, just to basically get the benefits of both. So there you go, that's the compressor section of Isotope Neutron. Keep an eye out for future videos where I will still be covering the other sections. We've still got the gate, exciter and transient shaper to go. So hopefully this video has been helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.